afternoon. We are at Shardow Airport and we are headed back to Manila so we can finally move on to our next country. But before we board our flight, I just wanted to highlight the fact that this is probably the smallest airport terminal that we have been in our travels so far and probably in my entire life. And it is so cute. Let me just show you. It's so small. And just like that, we're back in Manila. We are at the exact same airport hotel as we stayed at our first night in the Philippines. So we will see you in the morning. Good morning from Manila. It is 8.45 in the morning and we are going to head to the lounge to get breakfast, lunch, brunch, I don't know, whatever free food there is because our flight is not until 1.10 today. However, we have a dilemma. That's right. We have a choice of different lounges that are available to us in the terminal building that we're going to be going into. There are three different lounges. We have tried to find out which of them is the best one and every article tells us something different. So it sounds to us, at least, like they're all as good as each other and it really is basically just a case of randomizing it. So what I have done is I have put all three lounges onto a randomizer so that it can just pick which lounge we go to. Okay, what are the options here? So we have A Lounge, Mahaba Lounge, and Pags Lounge. All of these are in the International Departures section of Terminal 3 in Manila Airport, and they all basically offer more or less the same thing. Okay, let's spin. And the A Lounge it is. Let's go to A Lounge. So we come to the A Lounge in T3 in Manila and while the drink selection seems to be pretty great and so are the seating options, unfortunately the food leaves a little bit to be desired and we are quite hungry so we may end up skipping this one and going to one of the other lounges that are available to see if they have better food options. Nick and Rachel from the future here. We're actually coming to you from our layover in Bangkok, but we have time to film now, hence why we're gonna do the lounge ratings for the two lounges that we visited in Manila now. And we're gonna kind of try something different. We're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the A Lounge and the Marhaba Lounge. Starting with food for the A Lounge, I wasn't that impressed with it. I think the thing that actually turned me off was they had this particular dish that looked amazing. It was like rice and sausage and egg, but it had already been combined into one. And what if you just want an egg, like me eating vegetarian style? You're already making the three things, so why not put them out separately? Also, there wasn't a huge variety of food. They had toast. There was no fresh fruit, no fresh vegetables. 
it was just a very minimal selection and you even said that the quality of the hot food wasn't fantastic so with that we're giving it a six as for food in the Marhava lounge there was definitely more hot food options you also said that you preferred the selection there and the taste was far superior actually yeah they had chili con carne and they had a more flavorful looking rice and they had a little bit more selection when it came to pastries and more of what you would expect from a continental breakfast still no fresh fruit and so it's getting a little bit higher but not much higher it's a seven out of ten for drinks both lounges had a relatively decent selection as far as all of that went. You did have a couple of choices of beer, you did also have a couple of choices of wine, and a limited selection of top shelf spirits. And then on top of that, you did have your range of sodas and fruit juices, and also options on either water bottles or a water cooler so that you can stay hydrated. The only reason that we're giving the drink scores on each of these a slightly different thing is because the A lounge had self-serve coffee whereas the coffee at the Mahaba lounge was actually something you had to specifically ask for and the quality was about the same. So with that we are giving the drinks from A lounge an 8 and the Mahaba lounge a 7. In terms of cleanliness, the A lounge was actually fantastic, so nothing to complain about on the furniture or the floors. It was a 9 out of 10. However, the Marhaba lounge was surprisingly one of the less clean lounges we've been to. There was definitely like some hair and dirt on the floor, and the furniture was a little bit older, which meant that it was just in rougher conditions. So we're actually giving it a 7 out of 10 for cleanliness. Come on, from this was another point where these lounges really differed. The Mahaba lounge was pretty basic, we found. There were really only two different seating options, which was either bar stools or just couches type seating, which would get kind of uncomfortable if you sat there for too long. In the A lounge, then there are multitude of different seating options, certainly with a lot of cushioning, and you feel like you could actually spend a lot longer there if you really wanted to. So we are giving a lounge an 8 on this one and a 6 for the Mahalo lounge. In terms of amenities, these lounges offer pretty much the exact same thing. They both had shower rooms, complimentary Wi-Fi, as well as charging ports. So with that, they're both getting a 7 out of 10. And then when you total all of that up, that leaves the A lounge with a grand total of 38 and the Mahalo lounge with a grand total of 34, leaving them both ends of the mid-range spectrum of our lounge rating so far. So in the end, should we have left the A lounge for the more horrible lounge? I don't regret the food. Got it. And it was kind of fun to check them both out. It kind of felt like we were cheating on one, but uh, you know, we just no want to have some variety, spice up our life. Yeah. We've just arrived in Bangkok and we have three hours until our next flight, so that means it's time for yet another lounge.
So here we are in Bangkok Airport, having just gone to another lounge, which will mean another rating. But before we did that, I just wanted to say, this airport is huge. And as a result of that, pretty much most of the second floor is pretty much dedicated all to just lounges. And just to add to that, I don't think you could go wrong with what you choose, because just walking by them all, they look so plush. So good. So, no matter what airline you're part of, or if you've got a priority pass, or an Amex card, or whatever, then you could probably find something that you will be able to access. We went for the Oman Air Business and First Class Lounge. So, let's give you a rundown. We will start with food. This one was really good. I think in terms of snack options, fresh fruit, pastries, everything like that, then absolute second to none you had a full variety of everything you could possibly shake a stick at i think the only sticking point in comparison was the lack of cooked food options uh, which may rate this down in comparison to others but the quality that you got from everything was super so with that we're going to give this one an eight in terms of drinks this one was near on perfect they had all the juice and pop and water that you could ever want and it was all in takeaway fashion which I love because then you can take it to go on the plane into your hotel so we stocked up on like seven water bottles because <laughs> drinking water out of the tap isn't possible and so now we don't have to pay for it also they had a huge coffee selection they had a beer selection they had wine they had premium alcohol so with that we're giving it a nine on the cleanliness front near spotless people would come around to clear up after you pretty much every minute or two and yeah, all in all was just very fresh indeed. So we're giving this one a nine. In terms of comfort, they had a bunch of different seating options. All of them were super soft and comfortable and plush, you know, you could just like sink into them. They even had a little room with a chaise and the lounge was not overcrowded. You felt like you had plenty of space. So we're giving comfort a nine out of 10. In terms of amenities, this is where this falls down a little bit, just because there's not a huge amount that really this offers in comparison. Shower rooms are nice, and the fact that there are like little nap rooms with chaises, as Rachel has mentioned, is a nice touch as well. And also, if you haven't brought your own laptop, then they do have computers available where you can access the internet should you so wish. So with that, we're going to give this one an 8. And with all that, the grand total is 43 out of 50, which puts this in the top tier of lounges that we've been to. We've made it to our hotel in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and we would suggest getting your visa, if that's necessary with your passport, online. Because number one, very easy to do online. And number two, it saves you so much time at the airport. Going through immigration was super smooth. Honestly, yeah, it took about two minutes and it was like we didn't even need to get a visa in the first place. It was amazing. And I think the really cool thing, having just taken a 20-25 minute tow to ride, is actually this is a very modern looking city, way more than we anticipated. Yeah, it just looks really nice, so I'm quite excited to explore it actually. Yeah, it's not at all what I expected. Far more westernized than I thought it would be, and that's probably just me being underprepared and not researched, but there you go. Same girl, same. We will look forward to checking out more of this country starting tomorrow. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling.